Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa Welcome brothers and sisters to our fourth and final lecture from our series titled The Life Series. La ilaha illallah, how quick the month of Ramadan has passed. It felt as if it was just yesterday we were introducing the beginning of Ramadan and citing the words of Imam Ibn al Jawzi, if you remember back then and telling you about the series and what it's about and how the idea came about and now we find ourselves bidding the month and bidding the series farewell as we will do with our families and as we will do with life as a whole <laughs> on the day of judgment people will be asked how many years did you live in the life of dunya 70, 80, 90, what do you remember? They will say, لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْضَ يَوْمٍ فَاسْأَلِ الْعَادِّينَ We stayed in life about a day or a two. So ask those who keep collection of the days. We began the series speaking about the gangster life. And then we moved up to speak about the empowered life. And then we moved it up a notch again to speak about the good life. And the focus of last week's lecture was an ayah from Surah An-Nahl where Allah said, Man amila saliha min dhakarin aw untha Whoever works good deeds, whether male or female, wa huwa mu'min, whilst having iman. What was the outcome? Do you remember? Fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba. We will cause them to live a good life. That was the focus of last week's talk. What is the good life? But we didn't conclude the ayah. What is the conclusion of the verse? And we will give them their reward in full because of what they used to do, meaning in Jannah. So what is the nature of this full reward that Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has prepared for those who do good deeds whilst having Iman? Good life in dunya and a full reward in the akhirah. Let us take a look at what that looks like in our final lecture for Ramadan 2022. When the believers have finished from the trauma of the grave and the horrors of the resurrection, and they have finally crossed over the sirat, the bridge that leads over the hellfire, and now no one remains but the Muslims. The hypocrites are in hell. The people of no faith, they are in hell. And now you only have the practicing Muslims whose good deeds were greater than their sins. There is a phase here that not many people speak about. One last phase before they enter Jannah. It's called Al-Qantara. Al-Qantara means a bridge. It's a second bridge. What is the nature of that bridge and what is its purpose? Because hell is finished now for them. Bukhari narrates on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا خَلَصَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ مِنَ النَّارِ When the believers have been saved from the hellfire, they will be detained at a bridge between paradise and hell. What will happen there? And there, they will settle the scores that they had between them in dunya. So there's issues, there's problems, there's misunderstandings, there's disagreements. Nobody can enter Jannah with an ill heart. They will discuss all of their problems and their misunderstandings and they will settle their scores until they have been purified. <laughs> Till when they have been cleansed and completely purified, permission will now be given to them to enter Jannah. No more death to worry about. You will never have to worry about the fear of Allah. You will never have to fear His wrath. Never will you have to worry about hell or to see the face of the angel of death. Now what stands between you and Jannah 
our gates and imagine the sight of the billions of Muslims, Allahu Akbar, making their way towards the gates of Jannah. What do these gates look like? Utbah ibn Ghazwan, the companion, he said, Wallahi laqad dhukira lana anna ma bayna masari' al-jannati masirata arba'in aama. He said, it has been narrated to us by Allah that the distance between the two posts of a gate of Jannah is the distance of 40 years worth of travel. And then he said, وَلَا يَأْتِيَنَّ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمٌ وَهُوَ كَضِيضُ الزِّحَامِ Yet there will come a day when those doors will be crowded with people. May Allah allow us to be part of those crowds. They make their way towards the gates of Jannah. Khalas, it's paradise. Imagine the joy, the elation, and the excitement. You are there with your wife, your husband, your children, your friends, your family, your teachers, those you attended the masjid with, and you're looking at the gates of Jannah, you're awaiting for them to swing open. Who will be the first to knock? From all of humanity, no one will knock before our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before Idris, before Yaqub, before Sulaiman, before Adam, before Ibrahim, before Musa and Isa, he will come forward and he will knock. The angels will say, who is it? He will say, Muhammad. And he will say, the angels will say, we have been instructed by Allah to not open these gates to anyone before you. And now the gates, they begin to swing open. And I'd want you to imagine just a moment what the faces of those first batch of Muslims will look like when they enter Jannah. Because they will not enter paradise all at once. There are batches. There are groups. Depending on how quick and enthusiastic you were to doing hasanat and apologizing to Allah from your sins today will determine what batch you shall be from. We would like to be from the first batch. What will they look like as they enter this, the soils of Jannah? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes and he said, Awalu zumratin yadkhulun al-Jannah. The very first batch of Muslims to enter paradise. Their faces will glow like the glowing of the moon on the night when it is full. And the second batch, And then the second batch after them, their faces will glow like the brightest planet that you have seen in the sky. They enter Jannah and angels are standing in their reception. Malaika whom you will see, angels whom you will hear and they will speak to you. They are just as excited for you as you are for yourself. And what do they say? Come in, come in. They will say, Salamun Alaikum. Peace be upon you. Salamun Alaikum. Tibtum. You've done so well. فَدُخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ So enter Jannah, you will stay here forever. And the moment they enter Jannah, they find that inside of them is the knowledge of the whereabouts of everything. They don't need to ask for directions. They don't need to set up a navigator, a Google Maps. It's all been imprinted in their hearts. And that's why the Nabiul Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَأَحَدُهُمْ بِمَسْكَنِهِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ أَدَلُّ بِمَنْزِلِهِ كَانَ فِي الدُّنْيَا He said, I swear by the one who possesses my life. They will know the directions to their palaces, to their terrains, to their kingdoms better than they know the directions to their homes today. When you go home after this lecture from this masjid, will you ask for directions? You know exactly where to find your house. He said, you will know where your palaces are in Jannah better than you know where your house is today. You come in and the maps of Jannah have been printed on your heart. You know where your hur are waiting, where your rivers are waiting, where your oceans of wine, where your kingdoms are. You know it's down this road. Take a second left from the palace of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Keep going down until you meet Yaqub. Take the first left from the second market. You know where to find everything that belongs to you. Allahu Akbar. And they enter Jannah. And here they see 
scenes that defy description. They see meadows of endless perfection. They experience an ambience that has been perfected by Allah, the most perfect himself. They see things that no eye has ever seen and ears have never heard and they, their senses are about to be spoiled in the most lavish of all ways. And then they hear an announcement being made echoing through the gardens of Jannah. What does the announcement say? Inna lakum an fala tamutu abada. O people of Jannah, you will be given life. You will never have to die again. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَصَحُّوا فَلَا تَسْقَمُوا أَبَدًا And you will be given health. You will never have to worry about illness again. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَشِبُّوا فَلَا تَهْرَمُوا أَبَدًا And you will be given youth. Never will you go old again. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَن تَنْعَمُوا فَلَا تَبْأَسُوا أَبَدًا And you will be given bliss. You will never be sad again. We ask Allah Jalla Jalaluhu to make us from the inhabitants of Jannah. And our mothers and fathers to be from the very first batch to enter Al Firdaus Ulaana. Allahumma Ameen. We would like to take a tour of what inside, what is inside Jannah, and how relevant it is to finish off the month of Ramadan speaking about our goal, which is the pleasure of Allah, and to enter His gardens of paradise. How will we do it, however? How should we describe and tour Jannah? I will do it in a way that I claim is a little bit unconventional. We will do it by studying the opposite of Jannah. We will be comparing what paradise has to offer with the life of this world. Because one of the poets, he says, He says that with opposites, do the qualities of things become clear? With opposites, do the qualities of things become clear? So you can only really appreciate the calmness of the night if you've experienced what? The chaos of day. You can only in really appreciate what it means to have a, a soothing, quenching cup of water if you've experienced the dryness of thirst. And a lot of people, they say, you can only really experience the full sweetness of Islam if you've tried the life of sin or the life of jahiliyyah, ignorance. And the Qur'an is filled with these comparisons between their opposites. It compares between the night and the day. It compares between the sun and the moon. It compares between the words of Allah and the words of man. It compares between the deaf and those who can hear and the blind and those who can see. It compares between dunya and the hereafter as well. Allah said, أَرَضِيتُمْ بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ Are you satisfied with the life of this world? Over the hereafter, look at the comparison. فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Allah said, because the enjoyment of this world in comparison to the next is very little. As if to say, O oh, human being, if you are struggling with worldly attachments and you can't get this world out of your heart and you're falling into perpetual sin, all you need to do is compare this world with the afterlife. Then you will see the difference. So that is what we are going to be doing, inshallah. We would like to tour paradise by looking at the opposite, comparing it with the life of this world. It's going to be a 10-point stop, inshallah ta'ala. And let us begin with the first of them. Kingdoms. The life of this world has kingdoms, it has empires, and so does Jannah. But are they the same? Well, let's take a look. As for the kingdoms of this world, look at how they are damaged by pandemics, affected by war, affected by natural disasters, affected by famine, affected by economic crisis. The kingdoms of this world are limited in time, in place, in space. They are kingdoms that bring with them anxiety, fearing for your borders. Where is the Babylonian Empire? Where is the Byzantium Empire? Where are the Christian Western empires of Western Rome? Where is the Soviet Union? Where is Adolf Hitler's Third Reich? Where is it? It's all gone. 
These are the kingdoms of this world, limited in space and time, kingdoms of anxiety, empires of deficiency. As for the kingdoms of Jannah, the Prophet وسلم, said, as Bukhari narrates, he said, "Laqabu qawsi ahadikum fil jannati khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha." The space that is occupied by a bow in Jannah is better than this entire world and everything within it. Look at that, subhanAllah, for a comparison. The space occupied by a bow. The footprint in Jannah equivalent to the space of a bow. What is a bow? One and a half foot by an inch. That's the space of a bow. I mean, you can't even stand in that space with two feet. You can't even stand with one foot without falling over. Yet he says, that space in Jannah is better than this whole world with its Americas, with its Europe's, with its scenescape, with its mountains, with its Niagara Falls, with its treasures, its gold, its silver, with its reserves, with its yachts, with its islands, with its men and its women and all of its pleasures and desires. That space in Jannah is better than this entire world and everything within it. So if that is the nature of a space this big, what about the kingdoms of Jannah? What about the estates of Jannah, the empires of Jannah? And the answer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّةً يَعْنِي هُنَاكَ If you were to look over there in Jannah, Allah said, رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا You will see delights. وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا And huge kingdoms. What is inside of these kingdoms? There's buildings. We have buildings today. But what are the buildings of today? I mean, you spend the most fruitful of your youthful years toiling away, slaving away, laboring away, saving penny by penny, pound by pound in the hope of one day buying a flat. If you have big ambitions, maybe one day you'll buy a house. And most of us never achieve that, aslan. And then if you do, you spend the second half of your life doing what? Renovating, repairing, filling holes, filling cracks, restoring, painting. Why? Because this is dunya, it's wear and tear. These are the buildings of dunya. What about the buildings of the kingdoms of Jannah? Allah said, وَمَا سَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدٍ They will have pleasant dwellings within gardens of eternal residence. And Allah said, لَكِنِ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا Those who are mindful of Allah, لَهُمْ غُرَفٌ مِّن فَوْقِهَا غُرَفٌ مَّبْنِيَةٌ We will give them elevated mansions, constructed one on top of the other. تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Beneath them rivers are flowing. وَعْدَ الله. This is the promise of Allah. لا يخلف الله الميعاد. Allah never fails in His promise. The buildings of dunya today are made out of, as you see, uh, gypsum, plasterboard, masonry, timber, mortar, cement. The buildings of Jannah, لَبِنَةٌ مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَلَبِنَةٌ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ وَمِلَاطُهَا الْمِسْكُ الْأَثْفَرِ He said each building in Jannah is made out of alternating bricks of silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. And he said the cement that connects these bricks together is pure musk. Have you ever come across a binding material, a cement, that is a pure fragrance? How does that work? La ilaha illallah. Welcome to Jannah. And you know that today, there is nothing that adds to the drama and the luxury of a building. Like a, like a soaring ceiling like this one over here. A, a vaulted ceiling. We all aspire for that, but who can afford it? You want a vaulted ceiling? Take a look into Jannah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna lil mu'mini fil jannati la khaymatan wahidatan min lu'atin mujawwa fa'tuluha fil sama'i situna mila. For the believer in Jannah is a pavilion that is made out of a single hollowed out pearl. Think about that. A pavilion in Jannah made out of a single hollowed out pearl and it is 60 miles high into the sky.
These are the buildings of dunya and those are the buildings of Jannah. And 12 rak'ah a day that you pray from your sunnah, two before Fajr, four before Dhuhr, two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib, two after Isha. 12 rak'ah of nafil a day, Allah builds for you a palace in Jannah. What about the rivers of these kingdoms? Well, there are also rivers in the life of this world, but what type of rivers are they? They are rivers that sometimes turn green because of algae and moss and contamination. Sometimes they become polluted because of farm waste. Sometimes they flood and they devastate crops. Sometimes they dry up and they destroy families and they cause famine. These are the rivers of today. As for the rivers of Jannah, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu said, Fiha anharun mimma in ghayri asin. In Jannah, there are rivers of water that never pollute. And rivers of milk, the taste of which never changes. And rivers of wine, delicious for those who drink. And rivers of purified honey. Rivers. Go and swim in them, go and drink from them, go and enjoy them. The rivers of today, they have banks that are made out of mud and beds that are made out of mud. And so the water for the most part turns, turns brown. The rivers of Jannah, I introduce to you the river of Kawthar. Inna a'tainaka al-Kawthar. What is al-Kawthar? He said, al-Kawtharu nahrun fil Jannah. Al-Kawthar is the name of a river in Jannah. He said, حَافَّتَاهُ min dahab." The banks of that river are made out of gold. وَمَجْرَاهُ عَلَى الدُّرِّ وَالْيَاقُوتِ And the bed of that river is of pearls and corals. وَتُرْبَتُهُ أَطْيَبُ مِنَ الْمِسْكِ And its soil is finer than musk. وَمَاؤُهُ أَحْلَى مِنَ الْعَسَلِ And its water is sweeter than honey. وَأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الثَّلْجِ And it is whiter than ice. These are the rivers of dunya that flow inside of the ground. Yet have you ever seen a river that, fly, that flows inversely on top of the ground? He said, do you think that the rivers of Jannah are like the ones today, trenches that flow into the earth, through the earth? He said, La wallah, I swear by Allah that's not the case in paradise. They flow on top of the surface of the earth. The rivers of Jannah flow on top of the surface of the earth, passing through the markets and around the palaces and near the pavilions. They are there for everyone to see their water and to see their luxury and for people to drink from. Trees. There are trees in dunya and there are trees in Jannah. Are they the same? Make the comparison and you will see. As for the trees of dunya, the largest living tree that is known to man so far, apparently is a tree called the Hyperion tree. It's around 115 meters tall. So if you wanted to cross its shadow from side to side, maybe you can clear it in about five minutes, walking. <coughs> Huge tree. Yet now I show you the trees of Jannah. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna fil Jannati Shajara, in paradise there is a tree. Yasirur Rakibu fi Dhilliha Mi'ata Amin, la yaqta'uha. Where a rider will be able to travel through its shadow for 100 years. That's your entire lifetime and more. Just riding through its shadow for a hundred years and he will not clear it. And then he said, read the ayah from the Quran where Allah said, وَظِلِّ mamdud, Extended shade. In Jannah there is extended shade. The trees of today, the muddiest part of them is the lower part of the tree, the trunk. That's the dirtiest and muddiest usually. In Jannah, he said, مَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ شَجَرَةٌ إِلَّا وَسَاقُوهَا مِنْ ذهب. Every tree in Jannah has its trunk made out of solid gold. 
Trees today, they are temperamental, they're seasonal. They give you fruit some seasons and they don't in others. In Jannah, Allah said, وَفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرًا So much fruit, in its tons. لا مَقْطُوعَةٍ وَلَا مَمْنُوعَةٍ It's never seasonal and none of it is forbidden. Eat and drink. These are the trees of dunya and these are the trees of Jannah. That's our first stop, kingdoms. Our second stop, food. Our ideal night out in the evening or on a weekend is to go to a restaurant and eat. Yet some of that food causes you to vomit, some of it bloats you, some of it causes you heartburn, some of it raises your cholesterol, some of it raises your blood pressure. And you're worried about your waist size, you're worried about what your wife's going to say when she sees you putting on the kilos. And this is the food of this world. And subhanAllah, the poor can't eat from the food they want because they don't have the money for it. And the rich can't eat the food that they want because they don't have the health for it. That is the menu of dunya. As for Jannah, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu says, وَأَمْدَدْنَاهُمْ بِفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرًا وَأَمْدَدْنَاهُمْ بِلَحْمِ Allah says, كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةِ Eat and drink as you wish because of the good deeds that you did in the past. In Jannah, it's not about a four or five page menu that you read in a restaurant. You take it and a minute later you're flipping it from side to side as if to say, I mean, is, is that it? Nothing else? In Jannah, it's not a four or five page menu. In Jannah, it's not about all you can eat, it's about all you want to eat. You're eating because of desire, you're not eating because of a want or a need. You're eating because of a craving, a yearning, a hunger, a joy, pleasure. That is the food of Jannah. And you don't have to worry about your waist size, you don't have to worry about your health. Allah has taken care of all of that for you, including the bill. It's all been written off by Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eat and drink, pick from the pomegranates, pick from the palm trees, whatever wish whatever type of fish or meat you may wish for, you find it there in front of you. No cooking needed, no purchasing needed. This is the food of Jannah. And then you have, you have wine. And this is our third stop. What is the wine of dunya as we know it today? I don't think here in the West we really need to describe it. I think you've all seen it on a first-hand basis, what it does. It dulls your senses, clouds your mind, strips you from your health, robs you from your money, ruins your liver, destroys your kidneys. At the age of 20 years old, they call it having a good time. By the time you hit the age of 40, they now call it disease. The latest research is telling us that the safest level of alcohol consumption is actually none whatsoever. And then you look into the wine of Jannah that's not served in bottles or taps or barrels, served in rivers. Allah said about it, La fiha ghawlun, there are no bad effects in it whatsoever. Walahum anha yunzafun, and it doesn't intoxicate them. That's the wine of Jannah. You've all seen that horrible sight on an evening, a young man, a young woman standing outside of a bar, a pub, a club, with one hand on the wall, vomiting their guts out onto the pavement. Because they've been consuming najas, filth, that's what it is. And it's sad to see a lot of Muslims in this business, consuming it themselves, serving it up or selling it in their shops. It's a filth. That's the wine of dunya. Yet Allah describes the wine of Jannah as being what? وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا طَهُورًا Allah will give them a purifying drink. That's wine. He didn't say it is pure. Tahura means it's a purifying drink. So you don't have to be carried home after drinking the wine of Jannah. You don't have to worry about being told about something outrageous that you did, it's now on TikTok. You also don't have to worry about the prospect of fornicating with your mom or your auntie or your sister. That's what wine today does. No, in Jannah, the wine is It is white in color and it is delicious for those who drink from it. And what is the worst part of any drink, be it wine specifically or any other type of beverage? What is the worst part of the drink? Our brothers. Is it the first part or is it the last part? Usually it's the last part. Yeah, backwash central. Yet interestingly in Jannah, the mechanics of everything is reversed. Allah said, يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ رَحِيقٍ مختوم. They will be given a drink from a sealed nectar. Sealed, no one has touched it before you. 
a sealed nectar. Then he said, what? Khitamuhu misk. The last sip of that drink is musk. What is the worst part of a drink today is the best part of the drink in Jannah. When you finish, you get to the bottom of that cup. And we will describe the cups in a moment. You have this ah, fragrance of musk that blows into your face. Khitamuhu <coughs> misk. Then Allah said, وَفِي ذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ In this, let the competitors compete. So these are the kingdoms. This is the food. This is something about the wine. What about the service? Khidmah. We all love being served. I mean, we feel amazing going to a restaurant on a weekend. We've got a bit of cash in our pockets. And there's a waiter to come and help you. And for us, this is like the pinnacle of honoring, like, wow. Yet when you think about it, it's actually quite embarrassing. It's degrading. It's borderline humiliating because the reality is that you can't get your food unless that waiter gives it to you. And should that waiter tell you to leave, you have to leave. Otherwise, the authorities come in. There is no honoring about being served by a waiter today. And then look at their facial expressions. If you ask for one too many things and you get on his nerve, can I have the ketchup, please? Yeah, sure. Okay, this is going really well today. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the mayo as well, please. Yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, here's the mayo. Oh, uh, sorry, napkins, napkins, napkins. Yeah, napkins. Uh, I've, I've just dropped my spoon. Can I have another, another spoon? Okay. Can I have a high chair as well, please, for my child? Now he will turn around and say to you, uh, do you think I just work for you? What about all these other people I have to serve? Right? And then what about the service of Jannah? وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ Allah said. There will circulate among the people of Jannah young boys of everlasting youth. مُخَلَّدُونَ Everlasting youth. إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ If you were to see them, حَسِبِتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤَمْ مَنْثُورًا You would think that they are scattered pearls. Look at that description, La ilaha illallah. You would think that they were scattered pearls. Yatufu, Allah said. They are circulating around them, all over the place. Meaning they're, they're full of energy. They're full of livelihood. They're enthusiastic. They're there just to serve you. They have nothing else to do. Wildan, young boys of everlasting youth. Because you know how it feels to be served by someone your age or older than you. It doesn't quite feel right. Allah says you won't need to worry about that. There's no awkwardness in Jannah. They're all young. And they were created to serve. If you were to see them, you'd think that they were scattered pearls. They're all over the place serving. No one's chatting next to the window. No one's on his phone. No one's taking a tea break. They're scattered. They're all, they're all over the place. And they're like pearls. Because as a waiter, you know, by the end of the evening, you've got to go home and put your clothes in the washing. You've got to take a deep soak because you stink of fish or meat or steak or whatever it is that you're serving up to people. Allah said, no, those servants of Jannah, they're like pearls. They remain unblemished, clean, beautiful, amazing to the eye. And then Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, the companion, he speaks about service in Jannah. And he said, ما من رجل أو ما من إنسان من أهل الجنة إلا ويسعى عليه ألف غلاب. كل غلام على عمل ما عليه صاحبه. Every person in Jannah will be served by no less than 1,000 servants. That each and every one of them is doing something different to his neighbor. How? I mean, if I was to ask you now, like how, 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 would, how would you like to be served? You know, maybe you could list five ways. I want to eat, I want to drink, I want a comfortable bedding. And then now you've got to use your imagination. If you can stretch it to 10 or 20 ways, you know, you're very creative. But then a thousand. A thousand ways of service? Ah. That means, therefore, that in Jannah there are pleasures and enjoyments that transcend your human imagination. I mean, when Allah describes the vessels as وَيُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِآنِيَةٍ مِّن فِضَّةٍ وَأَكْوَابٍ كَانَتْ قَوَارِيرَ قَوَارِيرَ مِّن فِضَّةٍ That they will be drinking from cups that are made out of silver, yet they are crystal clear. How is that? لا إله إلا الله Cups that are of solid silver. Yet they are crystal clear. And if this is the description of the servants of Jannah, as you heard Allah describe, 
what do you make of the beauty of those people of Jannah who are being served? That is service in Jannah. What other stops do we have? Well, any food or drink that you consume has to have an end product. And in the life of this world is quite a nasty and grotesque process. So nasty that you need to take a moment to yourself and find a secluded place where no one can see you or hear you. And it's quite a horrid process. Any food we consume, that is the outcome in dunya. As for Jannah, the Prophet wasallam said, لا يبولون. No one urinates in Jannah. ولا يتغوطون. No one defecates in Jannah. ولا يتفلون. No one spits in Jannah. ولا يمتخطون. No one blows their nose in Jannah. You don't need to do any of that. He said, أمشاطوهم من ذهب. Their combs, they are made out of gold. ورشحوهم المسك. And their perspiration is musk. But surely there is a limit to how much you can eat. Even in Jannah, someone may say, before, you, before it needs to go somewhere, I say to you, true. But how does it work in Jannah? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, حَاجَةُ أَحَدِهِمْ عَرَقٌ يَفِيضُ مِنْ جَسَدِهِ فَإِذَا بَطْنُهُ قَدْ ضَمَرُ That your need for the bathroom in Jannah is in the form of light perspiration that is produced by your body and all of a sudden your stomach has shrunk and you're ready to eat again. Allahu Akbar. No time for bathroom and all of that waste of time in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Pure pleasure. And I'm sure you will agree with me that the impurities of life, they are not just the ones that lie here in your bowels. The real impurities of life are the ones that sit here in the hearts of men. Greed, rage, jealousy, hatred of couples who are having a good married life trying to separate them, mutual competition for dunya, this is where the majority of filth rests. And subhanAllah in Jannah, that has been taken out. At the doorstep of Jannah, it is removed from their hearts. Allah said, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ We have taken out from their hearts all bad feelings. إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ متقابلين. So they will be like siblings, reclining on thrones, facing one another. Harmony, agreement, peace. Unity, love, respect. These are the people of Jannah, like siblings. What about the climate of Jannah? Compare it with the climate of dunya. I mean, the climate of dunya is one that doesn't know stability. Torrential rain, blistering heat. Maybe you remember the earthquakes of Haiti, and the floods in Pakistan, the tsunamis of Indonesia. This is the weather of dunya. No stability, no consistency. As for the climate of Jannah, Allah says, مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ They will be reclining on their adorned couches. لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسَا They don't see in Jannah a sun, ولا زمهريرا And they never experience a blistering cold. So how will they differentiate between morning and evening if there is no sun and moon? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he has beautiful words. And he says, لَيْسَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ لَيْلٌ وَلَا نَهَارٌ وَلَا شَمْسٌ وَلَا قَمَرٌ In Jannah there is no sun and moon and day and night. وَلَكِنْ تُعْرَفُ الْعَشِيَّةُ وَالْبُكْرَةُ مِن نُورٍ يَظْهَرُ مِن قِبَلِ الْعَرْشِ But people are able to differentiate between the morning and evening through light that they see coming from the direction of the throne of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. That's how they differentiate between morning and evening. Markets. There are markets in dunya and markets in jannah. Are they the same? Well, the markets of dunya are, as you know, fraud, deception, destroyer pricing, envy, rivalry. And things like honesty and trustworthiness are really on the list of endangered species in the markets of today. Riba, theft. Covering up faults and defects. Claiming things that are not yours. These are the markets of today. As for the markets of Jannah, it's a different story. Muslim narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ سُوقًا يَأْتُونَهَا فِي كُلِّ جُمْعًا 
in Jannah, there is a market that people visit every Friday. These markets, by the way, brothers and sisters, you don't go to buy things. There's no exchange of commodities and goods. You go and you take what you wish. And this is the desire of man. When he goes into a marketplace, you always think, oh, I wish I can grab that and don't have to scan it through the till. We all think that. And you see that when there is a power cut or there is some sort of disruption to the store or city, what happens in these marketplaces? People go nuts. These markets you visit and you take everything you wish and there is no price expected from you. You've paid for that in dunya. He says, in Jannah, there is a market that they visit every Friday. He said, Then the northern wind blows and scatters in their faces and scatters in their clothes. And so they increase in beauty and splendor. So they go back to their families and they are in this state. And their families, they say, Wallahi laqad izdadtum ba'dana husnan wa jamala. They said, by Allah, you've increased in beauty and loveliness after us. And they will say to their families in their homes, and by Allah, you have also increased in beauty and loveliness after us. And by the way, what do you take from this element of beauty increasing in Jannah eternally? It means that the novelty of Jannah never wears off. You get a new phone, new pair of shoes, new item of clothing, a new car. How long is it before that sense of elation goes? The novelty wears off after how many weeks, days? Even marriage and the romance it comes with. They say that the half-life of romance is about three months. So three months into your marriage, expect that your romance is going to be cut by about half. That's dunya. Nothing lasts. Everything deteriorates. Everything gets boring after a while. And you look for your next fix. In Jannah, it's eternal. And things are increasing in beauty and amazement by the day and by the, and by the second. How is this possible? And that's why you never have to worry about getting bored. And I know you think about this. If Jannah is eternal, surely I'm going to get bored. And there must be an end time. No. Allah said, خَالِدِينَ <coughs> فِيهَا They will live there forever. لا يبغون عنها حيولا. And they don't want to go anywhere else. You will not want to be transferred from Jannah. These are the climates of Jannah. And these are the markets of Jannah. Before we conclude, what about the spouses of Jannah? Rather, people, generally speaking, in dunya, what are they characterized by? Bodily hair, B.O., belching, inappropriate sounds, beard trimmings in the sink, nail clippings in the floor, menstruation, sneezing, and then showing people the tissue that you've just sneezed in to ask them if it's a normal color. I mean, what's that about? Not taking a shower because you've got no major plans for the rest of the week. This is dunya. Spots, aging, senility, illness, bad moods, distracted with your phone, laziness, distracted by social media, distracted with your games, distracted with your car, death. We allow that to tempt us out of our faith. I know it brings with it a pleasure. We are a fitna to one another. But ya Habibi, if it's going to cause you to lose your religion because of the opposite gender, remember what I just said to you. That is what we are at the essence of it. And Allah is veiling us from our faults and our embarrassing elements. These are people today and these are the spouses of dunya. As for these spouses of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, or the Prophet of the Allah, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لو أن امرأة من أهل الجنة طلعت على أهل الأرض لأضاءت ما بينهما ولا ملأت هريحا. If a woman from the women of Jannah was to look over into the life of this world, she would fill the heavens and the earth with her luminosity and she would fill it with her beautiful scent. That's just a glance. And then he said, And the garment that she wears on her head is better than this dunya and everything it has to offer. So if that is the beauty 
of the garment that sits on her head, what about the beauty of the person beneath that garment? La ilaha illallah. Allah says, wa hurun ain. They are hur. Hur, as some of the linguists, they said, يعني يحارو فيها الطرف, meaning your eyes, they wonder at her when you look. يحارو, hur, they wonder in amazement, well, where do I look and what is this? La ilaha illallah, subhanallah. يحارو فيهن الطرف, and then عين, meaning wide and lovely, pleasant and wholesome eyes. حورن عين, Allah says, كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون, they are like preserved pearls. And Allah said, كَأَنَّهُنَّ الْيَاقُوتُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ They are like rubies and corals in their beauty. These are the women of Jannah. And as for the men of Jannah, because for everyone has his or her type. The men, they are also a different creation. The Prophet ﷺ has described the men as being jurda, meaning they are free from bodily hair. Murda, they are free from beards. Be patient with your beard, my brother. Why are you trying to copy the people of Jannah in dunya? They are free from beards in Jannah, not here. And then he said, Mukahaleen. Their eyes are anointed with kuhul. Bani thalathin wa thalathin. They are at the prime age of 33 years old. They are strong, they are healthy, and they're fit. They don't need no vitamin D tablets. They don't need no omega-3 tablets. They don't need no herbal remedies. They don't need no strange, embarrassing prescriptions. Alhamdulillah, they don't need to go to the gym and run on the treadmill for half an hour to get to a destination of nowhere. No, no. People of Jannah, the men of Jannah don't need any of that. Why? Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has described the men of Jannah by saying, بيده, I swear by the one who possesses my soul. إِنَّ he said that each man in Jannah will be given the strength of 100 men with respect to his appetite to eat and drink and desire and matrimonial relations. They are bursting with vitality. They are bursting with strength and liveliness. They are wholesome, handsome, beautiful men. Everything that the eye of a woman desires, she finds it in Jannah. And everything that the eye of a man desires, he finds it, he finds it in Jannah. Our tenth and final stop is stress. There is stress in dunya. Every phase of your life, you are in stress. The stress of going to nursery, you were so comfortable at home. The stress, stress of moving school, you're now at primary school, you got comfortable in nursery. The stress of secondary school, you're now pubescent, you're a young man, a young woman, your hormones are all over the place. Stress of exams and coursework and the stress of needing to get into college. The stress of getting an A-level to get into uni. The stress of revision and late night work. The stress of trying to find work and the stress of saving up and the stress of paying bills and the stress of finding a spouse and the stress of having healthy, righteous children. Stress after stress. Then the stress of illness and the stress of old age. And the stress of death. The stress of the grave. The stress of the day of judgment. It's one phase of stress after another. As for Jannah, the moment their eyes fall onto the pleasures of Al-Firdaus and the gardens of Jannah, what do they say? They say, Alhamdulillah, ladhi adhaba anna al-hazan. All praise is due to Allah who's removed grief from us, who's removed sorrow from us. Inna rabbana laghafoorun shakoor. Indeed, our Lord is forgiving and grateful. الَّذِي أَحَلَّنَا دَارَ الْمُقَامَةِ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ The one who's allowed us to live in this place of permanence. لَا يَمَسُّنَا فِيهَا نَصَبٌ وَلَا يَمَسُّنَا فِيهَا لُغُوبٌ They say no hardship touches us here and no inappropriate behavior. In Jannah, people rest. And that's why when they asked Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Oh Imam, when is it that people truly rest? He said you will rest following the very first foot you take into Jannah. This is how the realities of things become clear when you study their opposites, as the poet, he said. Are you pleased with the life of this world over the hereafter? What is the enjoyment of dunya in comparison to the hereafter, except little? When all is said and done, the Prophet ﷺ says to us, 
that everything you've heard about Jannah is nothing in comparison to its reality. Because Allah said, I have prepared for my righteous servants. Something that no eye has ever seen. And no ear has ever heard. And no heart could ever imagine. This is Jannah. Is it not worth a sacrifice, my dear brothers and sisters? Is it not worth rearranging and reshuffling your priorities in life? Is it not worth rethinking who your circle of friends are? Because ala inna sil'at Allahi ghaliyah, the goods of Allah are precious. Ala inna sil'at Allahi jannah, the goods of Allah are jannah. We ask Allah to give us jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us al-firdaws al-a'la. Our mothers and our fathers, our children, and our scholars and our teachers and our students and all of those who have a right upon us. We ask Allah to spare us from the torment of the grave and the difficulties of the day of judgment and to make us and our families to be amongst those who enter Jannah without any prior suffering or any accountability. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We hope to see you inshallah brothers and sisters in the uh, coming lecture series.